Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, I give you the scrawny skid butt L.E. Taking on Miss Trunchball. Will he emerge victorious? Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and welcome back to Tarantula Haven. Today I am pairing my Lassiodora Parahibana to the male Lassiodora Parahibana that I received from Nature's Exquisite Creatures on my last video. I know I said that I was going to start out with the Orphanicus Philippinus, which I had every intention to. However, that is not proceeding so well. Um, things are going great. They like each other. They're trying but they just can't seem to get it together, so I need a little bit more time on that. So I decided to go ahead and start pairing some of the other ones, and this is the results of the Lassiodora Parahibana. As you can tell from the thumbnail and from the title, things did not go as well as I would have liked. I have two Lassiodora Parahibana. My original one is one that I raised from a sling and I had it as a classroom pet and we named her Big Bertha because she's so large. This other Lassiodora Parahibana was given to me by a friend and she didn't come to me with a name, so I hadn't named her. However, because of the events that transpired, I have finally given her a name and her name is now Miss Trenchbull. I've never paired Lassiodora Parahibana, and I think I worded this poorly, but in my last video I said that someone had told me that they were a Brazilian species and that I should breed them because of the fact that they are Brazilian, and I didn't mean it to sound like I didn't know that they were a Brazilian species. I know that they are a Brazilian species, but they encouraged me to breed the species because of the fact that they are Brazilian and that Brazil no longer allows the exportation of their animals, so therefore I should continue the line here in the United States to breed Lassiodora parahibana so that we can continue to have them in the hobby. So I am doing my part. Fortunately, Nature's Exquisite Creatures has agreed to take on all the babies, so I don't have to worry about getting rid of them or taking care of them or anything like that. So when they, if they produce an egg sac, when they're ready to go, they're going to go straight to them and I won't have to worry about it. So that will continue to keep Lassiodora parahibana in the hobby as far as, you know, doing in my little part, but yeah, I understand they're a Brazilian species and it's important to keep them in the hobby. So I will shut up. You know how this ends, but the question still remains, was he victorious? Introductions are always the scariest part for me when breeding tarantulas. The males usually figure things out pretty quick once they enter the female's enclosure, but it's the females that you have to really pay attention to and watch their body language to see if they're going to be receptive or if they're going to view the male as a potential food source. So you want to pay really, really close attention to those little visual cues that they give off that will let you know that she is looking at him as a potential mate. And she is giving us nothing right now, so it's hard to tell if she even detects him, but I guarantee she probably knows that he is in the area. She's just not responding to him yet. And that little tapping he's doing is a good sign on his part. And there's a sperm web that he made a couple of days ago, so he's ready to go. So obviously he is detecting her. There we go, there's a little tapping going on there, so he definitely knows that she's there. She's still not giving us anything, but she's probably well aware that he's there by now. There we go, that little bit of tapping you see there, that 
implies that the female is receptive. She knows he's there and she sees him as a potential mate. But I'm still very nervous about this because if you know anything about LPs, they are very food aggressive and they usually pounce on anything that gets into their enclosure. But the fact that she didn't do that and she tapped back at him, that lets me know that she is curious and she is willing to give him a try. So let's see what happens. This is my first time breeding LPs, and as far as this male is concerned, he has me a little bit worried because he's kind of on the small side. I had a male mature out a few years ago, and he was a little bit bigger than this one, but sometimes that just doesn't mean anything because whether they are smaller or larger, if they're up to it, they will do the job just fine. Oh, that slow stalk is making me nervous. I'm hoping she's not stalking him. Oh, and look at that size difference, my goodness. Oh, oh, that's a good sign. That is a really good sign. That means that she is definitely interested. She is not trying to pounce on him and she is definitely responding to his tapping by tapping back. That's a real good sign. The fact that they're touching here um, and she's not pouncing on him, that makes me real happy. And you may see that she's displaying her fangs a little bit here, and that's perfectly normal. What he's doing here is he's teasing her a little bit, getting her to display her fangs, and then he'll use his tibial hooks to hook them underneath and move them out of the way or push them back so that she's not such a threat to him. In the meantime, he's trying to work underneath her and get as far underneath so that he can insert his emboli and inseminate her. Oh, and it looks like she's lost attention. I'm hoping this is not a bad sign.
here you can clearly see those fangs. Those fangs are the biggest reason why I always chicken out when it comes to holding my LP. I always want to hold her so bad, but I think about the size of those fangs. Those fangs are a half inch long. It's not so much the venom I'm worried about, it's the size of those fangs. They can probably do some damage. You can clearly see him working with his petty palps there trying to insert the emboli. Now, even though it looks like he might be inserting, he is not far enough back there. He needs to get to about this point right here. And it seems like he's having a hard time reaching it. This is why I was worried about him being so small because he's stretching, stretching, trying to get there, but he is not quite reaching it. So I'm hoping that he can do that without getting himself into trouble. Let's see if we can see a little bit better from this angle. You can see his pedipalps underneath there and it looks like I can see a little bit of the epigastric furrow. I'm sorry I'm having a hard time focusing. Okay, here we go. So that looked like he reached the uh, epigastric furrow. It looks like he got insertion right here. So if you notice, she's kind of lifting her abdomen up a little bit. When you see her getting some discomfort, that's usually a good sign that he's gotten insertion because I guess it doesn't feel good to them or it's just something foreign that is penetrating. So they tend to react a little bit. So it looks like he got one in. And here he goes, there's the second one, and that's definitely insertion. You can see it going into the epigastric furrow, so that is a really good sign. That's two down. Now, hopefully he can back off. I don't think he's gonna try for another one, unless he didn't get it with the first time. Okay, so he's trying again, and there he goes. There's definite, oh, de oh my goodness, no. Oh. Uh, there was just nothing I could do on that. Um, well, it looks like I can see that he definitely got insertion. The epigastric furrow is open, and I can definitely see something in there. Uh, I, there was just a, I heard a crunch. And I think I saw a squirt of um, hemolymph. So she got him before I could do anything about it. 
So here, yeah, we can definitely see that he did successfully get insertion, but unfortunately it cost him his life. I was not expecting her to double him over like that. You might think it cruel of me not to intervene right there while he's struggling to get away, but she's already envenomated him. I heard the crunch. I saw a little squirt of hemolymph. So he's pretty much done for at this point. So I really could not intervene or tear them apart without hurting both of them because she will not let go she's she that's her meal she's gotten him and uh, she's gonna hold on to him with everything she has so it's best just to let her have him sometimes that happens in nature that becomes their first meal after their insemination so that will go along to helping her make some healthy babies so hopefully it wasn't all for nothing and he didn't die in vain and hopefully he she will produce an egg sac with lots and lots of little babies to replace him so i know it sounds bad but that's just the way it is in nature sometimes and i really could not do anything to interfere on that she just took me completely by surprise she, they never separated they never let go so there was no way that i could put anything in between them to get them apart Poor little guy. I hate it when that happens. It's one of those things that just goes with the territory and I wish that it could have ended differently. There was absolutely nothing I could do. I, I don't know if you saw me kind of sticking a stick there with that I was using to prod them with, but there was no getting in between them. She just completely curled over him, rolled over, and I, he was locked in. And uh, before I could even do anything, there was a crunch. I saw a little squirt of hemolymph, and I knew that was it. That was it for him. There was no point in breaking them apart. And in nature, sometimes that is the meal that helps them make it through to make their egg sac. So as cruel as it may sound, um, he was victorious. He did achieve insemination. You could see it clearly there on the video, but it cost him his life. And I, I feel bad about that. I don't want that to happen to any of the tarantulas, but that's just nature's way. So Jerry, Lily, I'm so sorry that this happened. I know you guys know the deal. You guys breed and sell tarantulas, but I still feel bad about it. So hopefully here very soon, I'll be able to send you guys a whole bunch of little spiderlings and you'll have more LPs than you know what to do with. That wraps it up for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I'm so sorry you had to see that, but sometimes it just goes that way and that's just the way nature is. Nature is cruel, especially Miss Trunchbull. And uh, <laughs> I still have three more pairings to go. I've got the Orphanacus Filipinus, and like I said, that one's going good. They're just not doing it. They're, they're playing back and forth, they're dancing and so on, but it is just not happening. So I may have to set up a time lapse or something that is less disturbing for them so that they can get the job done. I've got the green bottle blue to go, and I've also got the Trinidad Chevron. So we'll see how those go. Um, the Trinidad Chevron, I feel pretty good about. I got a lot of a lot of experience with that. The green bottle blue, I've only paired once before, and they can be pretty unpredictable. So hopefully nothing bad will happen with them. And if you are interested in tarantulas, definitely check out Nature's Exquisite Creatures. They have lots and lots of species to choose from. They also have a big assortment of isopods as well as other invertebrates. So definitely check out Nature's exquisite creatures and if you use the discount code thaven10 you can get 10% off your order and if you'd like to support this channel i have a teespring store where i sell tarantula haven merchandise thank you so much to my patreon supporters and thank you to my newest patron dana grimes thank you so much for your support and if you'd like to become a patron yourself there's a link down below in the description as well as all the others until next time keep loving them tarantulas <laughs>